Hey everyone, welcome to Build. We are live from London. Please give it up for Ollie Locke and Jack Rogers. <laughs> Grab your mics. Hi, hi. How the devil are you? Hi, guys. How are you doing? Hi. So you are here today because you're about to launch a very exciting new gay dating app. Very much so. Tell us all about Chappie. So Chappie launches on the 1st of March, goes live. Uh, Jack and I have been working on it for about eight months now. And so while well, I've been trying to battle filming as well as being in an office from nine till eight at night, um, which people have enjoyed. Um, and so, yeah, it's, um, it launches pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a bit more about the app itself. How does it differ from, you know, I suppose Grindr is the biggest gay app that most people are aware of. How does it differ from that? So what we realized, so basically when I came out on camera all those years ago, uh, I didn't really know where to go and I struggled because I knew there was Scruff and Grinder and Hornet and stuff, but they frightened me. They were places I didn't want to go on, and for the pure reason that, as a 24-year-old, I didn't like the idea of a 60-year-old man sending me a picture of their penis, to be quite honest, uh, which is actually something you can do. It seems archaic. It seems, it seems completely not the community that we're living in to have that as our only platform. And so uh, we decided um, to come together. Jack was working in dating, dating apps and, and was uh, working the marketing for Happen. And I would speak to him and say, something's not right here. We've got to do something about it. And a year or two later, it happened. And then we've spent the last eight months working on it and it's out soon. Jack, can you tell us a little bit about the functionality of it? Because I know there's some really nice features. Sure. Uh, so the main kind of USP is that basically it's very similar to kind of um, other swiping dating apps. But when you're swiping yes or no, you also have a sliding scale at the top of the screen, which allows you to select what mood you're in and what, who, what you're looking for. Um, so the scale basically goes from Mr. Right to Mr. Right Now. Uh, and so if you're looking for something kind of more spontaneous, then you choose Mr. Right Now. And if you're looking for something more significant, then choose Mr. Right. Um, and I guess it's interesting because all the other dating apps are currently kind of focused on hookups and casual dating. So this is the first one that kind of really allow, give, gives the kind of gay community a bit more option, a bit, a bit, a bit more control. Um, and equally, through having that kind of sliding scale, I guess it will also kind of, uh, it avoids that first 10 messages that you get on Grindr or the, the three dates that you go on where someone wants one thing and the other person wants something completely different. You know, with the sliding scale, it means you're only matching people who are looking for the same kind of thing. Um, so yeah, we hope, hopefully it'll be really good. Um, and interestingly, you have kind of insisting that there has to be a face pick on, as, on the profile. That's so why is that so important? So basically, Bumble is our sister. So when Jack and I came up with the idea of, this, of the app, um, we met Whitney Wolf, who co-founded Tinder and, and, uh, and started Bumble. And um, they basically invested in us fully and said, be, be our, our younger brother. And we were like, 100%, let's do it. And so where their responsibility values, uh, responsibility values and um, they've completely, they've fundamentally changed how, how dating has changed in the, for, for women, especially. Um, they've now got 5% of LA on the app. It's doing incredibly well. Uh, they've just hit 10 million users. Um, and so we hold the same values as them. And so that's where it started. Um, we also want to change it. There's a horrible stigma behind all the other gay, gay dating apps. And we want to change this. And responsibility was up there with that. So that seemed like a good step to go towards. I also think that um, just from using Grindr very briefly, You've, you, if you go on Grindr, there's basically a grid of profiles. So there's three by three grid. And on average, I would say six of the photos on there are just a picture of someone's torso. Um, so by having this obligatory, your face has to be in the, fo the photo, hopefully it'll make the experience a lot more enjoyable. And you'll actually be dating faces rather than torsos. Absolutely. Um, you also have to have names as well. You have to sign in on Facebook. OK. Start, so it's not, Will it be using real names? So it's real names. You don't just have DJ or, or LM or something. You actually have a name. This is a person you're speaking to. Um, a lot of these sort of apps have, had, have been criticized in the past because they're seen as being anti-Cupid almost, and that um, they're sort of contributing towards people not having real sort of world connections. What do you think about that? Do you think this is a step in the right direction? I think so, because I think with the, with the sliding scale, the way that we match you with people that are looking for the same thing, it basically gives you, it sets you up for success from the first date, because other apps, you're not really entirely sure what, some, what frame of mind someone's in, what they're looking for, whereas with Chappie, every single match, 
you know exactly what the other person wants, and therefore you don't have to go through that awkward kind of scoping out what the other person wants. You just know immediately this guy is looking for this, and when you meet on that date, you're, you're set up for success from that point onwards. Obviously, we can't help you once you're on the date, but you know, I think. <laughs> hmm. um, so let's talk profiles. Um, have you got profiles, or will you be having profiles? I certainly will do. You won't be, will you? I, I, I do just found a, this out. <laughs> I, I will have a profile, but um, I'm not actually gay, so I won't be, I won't be using it like Holly does, but I will be on there, you know, see, seeing what's going on and checking out. But I, yeah, I certainly will be, and I'd like to... I, I, I want, I'm now 30 next month, and I want to discuss the idea of, of meeting someone to spend time with. I don't... I, hookups aren't really for me anymore. I, I'd rather look for something more serious, so I would be on Mr. Right. So, oh, so you'd totally be up for dating someone that... You heard that here first. Um, so let's talk do's and don'ts on profiles. What are absolute no-nos and what's sort of guaranteed to get you maybe a date? Okay, so I believe when you try and, you try and pick your pictures, you have to really have an adventure behind it. So you have to show your best things you possibly can do. So don't just do a picture of you in the gym. Although it's a part of your life, don't have five of them. Have a bit of you on a Cornish beach or in front of a fire or something fabulous that depicts exactly what you are. Sell them what you do out of work. And I think that's, that's, that's the important thing. Yeah. Um, let's talk dating. I'm going to get a bit personal now. Good. Um, what are your own experiences of the dating scene generally prior to the launch of Chappie? I mean, we know some of them obviously from Made from, in Chelsea. From, from, from what people, last six, years, six and a half years hasn't covered. Um, so I, uh, you know what, I've had wonderful relationships and wonderful dates and disasters as we all have. Um, Tell us about some of the horror stories. I mean, they're always interesting. I mean, I, I, I mean, there are horror stories. I was saying, saying this morning, I, think, I went on a date once and I, and they didn't, I didn't know it was a date. Uh, and they did and it was awkward. Um, there is someone, that, more about someone that. that came in actual clown shoes from a job. That the clown shoes? Because they were a professional clown and they came in clown shoes. <laughs> and that was, that's up there with, with something that I, I really enjoy. I tell you, every date you go on is a kind of practice and a story uh, with your friends and a practice towards that final time where you will be on that final date. And uh, anything in between is a, is a wonderful adventure. And do you have a type that you go for or...? You know what, I think if someone's nice, then that, that always helps life. Nice is a horrible world my English teacher would tell me off. Um, but as long as they're lovely, it does help an awful lot. I do like more of a, a, a taller person. I think uh, I like tall people. There you go, if you're tall, uh, submit your application. There you go, I'm what on Chappie. You, uh, I guess for me it's all about the personality at the end of the day. Um, they have to have some form of chat. Um, I guess when you're on the day it's important that I don't feel like I'm just constantly talking because I love to talk and if the person's not talking then I will just talk and talk and talk and talk and they won't get any words in. I think uh, laughing at my jokes is a big thing as well. If they do that then it's a really big thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and have you got your eye on anyone at the moment? No, I'm, I, as John Mayer said, perfectly lonely, um, which is quite sad. Really. It's not. I'm, I'm so busy right now launching this and obviously trying to film Chelsea at the same time. It's, it's a, a lot of work, so I think it would be unfair to start in a relationship with someone else. So, talking about Made in Chelsea, yeah. do you think it's a help or a hindrance to you on the dating scene being on that show? <laughs> hindrance like not even like that is no way no, it's the least aphrodisiac of anything I've ever done in my life is made in Chelsea and the reason why is because whereas you can kind of delete a past every now and then when you meet a new person they don't know what's your past they've got Google images now and so anyone can Google long hair and Union Jack trousers which just doesn't work anymore um, and Does it ever work yeah, it, <laughs> thanks Jack uh, not really but it, it, but it is more difficult to have that when everyone knows your entire life. And I think uh, that is hard. But, yeah. Do you think it's an accurate portrayal of you on Made in Chelsea? Do you think people get the, a, a good idea about you on it? Or do you think it's edited to within... It's not edited, but I think when you know you're on camera and you kind of... I think you often play up a little bit. Um, I think especially at the beginning, I certainly did. I, th I thought of it as a little pantomime, and I really enjoyed it. And I was very much the dame and enjoyed my job. Um, still on Made in Chelsea. Obviously, Binky's just announced she's pregnant. Very good friend of yours. Um, are you angling for Godfather? 
I mean, who knows? I think she's, she's enjoying pregnancy so much. I speak to her every day. And uh, she's enjoying pregnancy so much. And she's, she's really well. And she's, I saw her the other day. She's really big. Like, she's really big. She's covering it really well. And, um, Is she chew? Uh, not my news to tell. Okay. Um, but, um, but yeah, she's, no, she's enjoying it. So I don't know about Godfather yet, but we'll, we'll soon find out, I'm sure. Okay. Um, so back to dating. I've got a few quick fire questions for you. Um, might not be that quick fire. You can take as long to answer them if you want. But who would be your ideal celebrity date? This is for both of you. Uh, Margot Robbie, probably. She just got married last week. So sad. Okay. Um, I would probably. Ooh, I, I, you know Luke Evans, new Gaston. He's pretty fit, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Luke Evans. Wouldn't we'll, say no. We'll go with Luke Evans. <laughs> and if Tom Evans wasn't a good friend, well, all the Evans is, if Tom Evans wasn't a good friend, then, then Tom, because I think he's so beautiful. Whenever I look at him, I'm like, your rugbiness is just, yeah, a bit pervy now. You managed to, avo managed to avoid the cauliflower ears and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, that's it. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, best place for a first date? You must have some good answers to this. Hmm. I'm actually going on a first date tonight, and I'm going to Angel, so that would be my suggestion. <laughs> Just Angel, there you go. Angel, we're just walking around Angel. No, I, I remember we're going to some pub, but... I think I like to live my life like a Richard Curtis movie, and so anywhere that has been a sort of set of any kind of Notting Hill, Love Actually, Bridget Jones, almost romantic dilemma, there's a fabulous place, Beedell's in Borough Market, just opposite Bridget's door, where they kind of fly through the windows. That's fabulous. That's a great place to go. It's all wheat, wine and cheese and fabulousness. South Bank, gorgeous. Um... No. So you sound like a total romantic, is that true? Yeah, I'm a completely horrid romantic <laughs> that is so difficult to portray in 2017, but it's something you have to... I really believe in keeping that up there because that's why we're bringing this up as well, a sense of romance behind it. The marketing is very much based behind finding your Sunday morning, not your Saturday night. And so that is also something that no other dating app likes to do. Let's bring back a bit of romance. Gay guys are in a position now where nine years ago when Grind started, they couldn't, there wasn't so much of a future. We couldn't have children, we couldn't get married. Now that's all changed. Now there is a position for us to have a platform that you could theoretically spend the rest of your life with someone. Let's create the romance behind that back again and do it with Chappie. Absolutely. Um, worst chat up line you've ever heard? God, it has I, I, I'd personally just get a bit offended on Bumble when uh, someone just says hey or hi because I've gone to the effort of dressing... It's not going to work, is it? Well, no, I know. And, and I've put a lot of effort into my bio, so I just want more than a high. So Jack's profile photos are actually amazing, because with the profile photos, it's amazing, because you can, you can kind of create the story beforehand. Jack has got a dressed-up picture of him as Cara Delevingne. Now, it's weird. With makeup on, he is Cara. It's very odd. <laughs> Now, when, when we hit a, a, a million members on, on Chappie, I've said that I will, she does follow me on Twitter, and I said that I will tweet her, my only tweet I could possibly ever tweet Cara Delevingne, saying, with the picture of her and the dress up, uh, him and the dress up version. So, uh, so that's... I can see it, actually, Jack. Uh, it, is, it is scarily accurate. Um, very odd, we'll show you later. Yeah, I would, but... So is there any chat up lines that you wouldn't reject that you'd be like okay yeah, yeah that's hit the mark anything from falling from heaven or stair letters to st what is it what is it stair lifts to heaven or, or like it's all a bit what is it no <laughs> ladders ladders tights ladders that's it yeah remember anything like that is disastrous i would just avoid that i would i mean do chat up lines really work nowadays no, I'm I not don't sure think they so. do. No, it's all just like you said. It's just they like, ever, hey, if they look at my profile and they've they've looked at it even remotely and they've picked out something even slightly funny, then I'll reply. If it's just hello or a really cheesy chat line, then it's not really going to happen. So, Ollie, you said you're romantic. What's the most romantic thing someone's ever done for you? You know, it's generally me doing stuff for them. I don't well, usually... tell us that. We might learn no. something from you. I don't know. There's been this. I, I remember. I took, I tell you what, someone, years ago when I was a lot straighter, I went out with a girl called Ashley, <laughs> I went out with Ashley James, who's a lovely girl that on Main Chelsea, and um, I took her to, I said, we're going to Paris, and actually we'll go to New York, she had never been to New York, and I took her to the airport, and we went to New York instead of Paris, so that's, that's quite sweet. But, nice. Um, she liked that. Um, biggest turn off someone can do on a date? <sighs> Just not talking in general was a bit of a turn off. <laughs> that is as well. Chewing with their mouth open, hideous. No, nothing. Um, always body odor, never good. Um, and yeah, I think just oh, bad chat's never fun, is it? It's never fun. But yeah, no, I think, I think if you're going on a date, make sure you're clean and smelling nice and, 
and kind of the basics. Nothing. Well, yeah. Also, use an earbud. Seems to have gone off earbuds. You know when people have earbuds. Kind of, yeah, I got this weird thing. <laughs> have you been dating? No, just generally. If you kind of look and you're sitting there and like, oh, you just need an earbud. It's like <laughs> it's one of those awkward situations, but it's true, and it's something that people forget nowadays. They're very cheap. What to clean the ears out? Yeah, just like just not. I thought I thought you weren't supposed to use earbuds to clean. No, the, yeah, they aren't getting banned because yeah. the stick bits now. Maybe that's why. Well, it's naughty. Then we're just going to go around with rank ears. Why are you Why are you looking so closely at someone's ear? But no, it's, it's just coming like, out. I always think if you're a hairdresser, it must be something that I would. All, you, I mean, you're literally like that, and you could just see you'll be like, "This is revolting. Clean your ears, you horrid monkey." <laughs> We'll leave, we'll leave, leave earwax there. Um, we've just had Valentine's Day. Did you celebrate it? Or were you too busy we, working? We had a, a very mad one where we just went out together because we were in New York and had a drink and went home alone, as we always do. So. A romantic evening together. Yep. Jack and I sat there with all these lovely couples around us. Um, bitter. Um, <laughs> no, it was lovely. We just came, flew back from New York three hours ago. We'd been up there doing all the pre-launch for Chappie. And so it's, um, but yeah, it was very much Jack and I's uh, a lovely evening for, for the two of us. Sounds beautiful, I have to say. It was. <laughs> um, I think we've got some questions from the floor, if you're happy to answer those. Can we get the first question, please? Hi, Ollie. Hi. Um, when you were in, um, in the Big Brother Celebrity House, beyond what we saw on camera, what did you find difficult to deal with in there? I think confrontation is always difficult, I think, for, for anyone, but I... I'm useless at it. I've grown better now, but I am fairly useless. And when you don't have anyone to speak to apart from on camera, that's very difficult. You want to go and cry. And as soon as you have some sort of argument, you actually want to go home that second. It's really, that, that's, that's the hardest bit. You just want someone, I just want someone to talk to, I think, off, off camera. Also, I, I, I didn't poo for like six days because you just can't, because it's like you, like it's the most, you, I mean, it's like when you go on holiday and it's a horrible look, just, it's like, the, yeah. I always wonder how they do that on I'm a Celeb, because that's like, they just seem to film absolutely everything on Drop, that. But, yeah, oh, and then awful. talk about it so openly. Awful. Yeah. Did you watch any of the last series of Celeb Big Brother? I, literally one or two episodes. I'm specifically talking about Kim Woodburn. I, I knew you were going to be saying that. <laughs> Well, she's a uh, remarkable woman. She is remarkable. <laughs> um, but again, fabulous entertainment. That's what that show's about, is creating these personalities that are going to make the entire country watch, and that's exactly what happened. Have you ever met her? No, I didn't. Would you like to meet her? Particularly. I mean, right. <laughs> uh, we've got another question from the floor, I think. Hi, we've got a um, couple of questions from Twitter. Uh, one of them, I saw that you've got a very cute puppy. Do you ever use him to get chatting to people out and about? You know, Bear gets more action than I do. Um, Bear's a bit of a slut around the parks. He's a bit of a man, man, man eater. Um, uh, he's definitely not gay either. We've worked this out. He's definitely not a gay dog. Um, but uh, you know what? He is actually... Bear is very beautiful. He's a lovely dog, and everyone kind of falls in love with him. Um, but, yeah, he certainly comes around me quite a lot, and it, it does help sometimes. Actually, also, weirdly, he the does also have a rogue habit, which is in new buildings, he does just poo on the floor. Um, <laughs> first, time, first time Ollie brought him around to my house. Yeah. Ollie left, <laughs> Bear left, and then half an hour later, there well, he's in just my bedroom. He's territory. That's all it is. <laughs> Thanks. We've got uh, another one from Twitter. Uh, obviously, Kim Woodburn had, had a bit of a breakdown on Celebrity Big Brother. How did you keep your head? You know, weirdly, I haven't been asked about Big Brother in years, and this is funny. Um, how did I, I, I... You know what? I think you just... Luckily, I think in any circumstance you are, I think you find a mother, a father, a best friend, uh, and someone to flirt with, and I think that's always a quite a good, good, good thing to do. Luckily, I had... Lionel Blair um, <laughs> as my honorary father, um, Sam Fairs to flirt with, uh, and Lee Ryan at the same time, a little bit of flirting with Lee. And, uh, and yeah, I think that was, I think just create the fun as much as you can. You're only in there for a little bit of time. What was the biggest lesson you learned from your experience in that house? Um, God, it's, I, I, Never to do it again? <laughs> I, I wouldn't do it again. No, 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 no. How come? Um, I, weirdly, so I did Bear Grylls the Island um, a couple of months ago, and that was 
a far more challenging situation because that's kind of we only had a knife in the middle of a middle of a, an island in Panama, um, and that was the loneliest place I've ever been. And that that was that taught me an awful lot. And you know, people are like, "Oh, I found myself," and all you get kind of cynically. Um, we, I came back and I was like, I, I want to see my dad more. I was like, I actually did learn something about my life, which is extraordinary. But it's, it is funny being alone and uh, away from cameras in front of you, which is why. Are you still in touch with any of the housemates? I spoke to Lee Ryan this morning, weirdly. But, but, um, to congratulate him on his yeah, EastEnders exactly. role. Yeah, yeah. So congratulations on, on the EastEnders role. Um, but, yeah, but yeah, I speak to a few. I saw Sam Fares, the NTAs the other day, Casey Batchelor, I see every now and then. And, Right. Yeah. Have we got any more questions? Lionel, I speak to a lot, actually. Lionel, I speak to every birthday. He's on the Marigold now. He's on he? Great Marigold, yeah, a hotel. And he's, I speak to him a lot. He teaches me an awful lot. He tells me about all the kind of the stories that man... I take him for lunch once every two months, and we sit there, and he talks about Liza Minnelli and Judy Garland, or Judy Gum, as she was called before she changed her name, he tells me. And all these wonderful stories that you can't get from modern-day celebrity, and this is old-school stuff. He's been in the industry 61 years, 62 years. So. Oh, no, he's incredible. Incredible, man. Yeah. So we've got another question. Hi, Ollie. Hi. Um, I saw you on Bear Grylls Island. Uh, which of the guys from Made in Chelsea would you least and most like to spend the time on an island with? Oh, controversial. <laughs> I, w I would least like to spend it with Mark Francis, um, who is the kind of... And the reason why is because we drive each other utterly mad. I think we're both peacocks, and uh, he out-peacocks me. Um, but I think we both drive each other mad, so I think that's um, yeah something that I, I wouldn't particularly... That would, I wouldn't warm to that enormously of the thought, although it would be quite good TV, I imagine. Um, I don't, um, I'd like to see Spencer in there. I think that would be quite funny. Have you been watching him on The Jump? No, I've been away. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't yet. Um, I don't know how well he's doing. He couldn't ski before, I heard. He's very confident on it. <laughs> he's very confident <laughs> in himself me. anyway. Spencer is yeah. uh, the only man in the world that can, yeah. My mother is obsessed with Spencer. It's very odd. Like, <laughs> he's, got these, he's got these eyes, literally, that burn through you, and you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm, uh, yeah. I mean mum, mum doesn't know what to do. She said, him and David Attenborough, she wants to shag. <laughs> and on that note, guys, can you just remind us when the app is going to be actually be launching? So Chappie is live on the 1st of March. Um, and um, and you, yeah. you can sign up uh, for the waiting list now on, on the website. If you Very nice. Chappieapp.com. Best of luck with it. Give it up for Ollie and Jack. Thank you so much.